You've become such a, a spokesman and a campaigner. Was it kind of by accident? Or have you always been like that? Um, you know, it was by accident. I sort of always describe myself as an accidental activist. <laughs> um, I've always been mouthy, <laughs> and, <laughs> as a lot of drag queens are. And, uh, you know, my live shows, you know, they're fun, whatever, but I always try to make a point in them. Yeah. Um, but the whole sort of, you know, ending up sort of being some sort of weird symbol or <laughs> avatar for change or something was just a total accident and really nothing to do with me. But you did <laughs> but you did play a really big part in it and it was a massive, massive change for, for Ireland. I mean, it really was. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people outside of Ireland, they imagine that Ireland is still a sort of 1950s you sure, know, thing. of course. Um, but Ireland, of course, has made huge changes Indeed. in the last 30 years or you know, certainly since I came out as you know, yeah. a young gay boy or whatever. Um, so yeah, the changes have been really dramatic, and mm. and of course Ireland was the first country in the world to bring in marriage equality, you know, via a, you know referendum, a popular vote. Indeed. And so, th so, so we had to have like a whole six-month-long conversation. I mean, y you're Scottish, you understand, you know, the Indeed, referendum yes, thing. Of so, course, of so course. we had like six months of an argument about it. It was on mm. every TV show, every radio show, constantly. Yeah. And then we all got together and voted on it. And actually, it turns out that 63% of us think it's absolutely... Yeah. And the world still turns around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, life goes on. Fallen in, you and know? It's all right. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. all right. The, the, the documentary about you is mm. remarkable. What a life you've had. I mean, yeah. Panty, tell me about Panty. Where did, where did she... Did she sort of... Was it when you went to Japan that you really sort of discovered her? Well, I had started doing some drag when I was a college, an art student in college. Right. And, um, and I spent some summers here, and I used to hang out with a guy called Lee Bowery. Who, oh, yes. Yes, yes of, of course. course. And so he sort of sort of opened wow. up this whole world to me that, you, know, I, gee, you can be whoever you want to be. Yeah, of course. You know, and because uh, I think I had felt I was always going to be this, you know, kid from a small town in the west of Ireland. But then I realised, actually, you can be anything you want to be. Exactly. The world is huge. <laughs> yes, but I wanted to be something more fabulous than that. <laughs> But then you're right, I went to Japan in my early 20s and that's where I started doing drag professionally and right. I was part of a double act there. And um, yeah, so, so the sort of a proto version of what you see now started <laughs> in Japan. Yeah. And now, I mean, back when you, when you were doing it, when you were first starting out, that was real kind of pioneering stuff. Now when you see shows like RuPaul has got yes. the drag race and all that, um, being a drag queen is a real career. I mean, yeah. it always has been in a sense, but now it's kind of... Well, it's funny because when I was starting drag, I never, I never imagined for a single moment that anybody could actually make a living out of it. I was just doing it because it was fun and yeah, wild yeah, and yeah. underground and transgressive and all the things that I liked about it. Um, you know, and now, of course, lots of young, you know, kids, they think, oh, that, that's a career and I might do yeah. that as a career, which is just amazing to me. That's a big change. But the other thing that's odd for me is that in Ireland, I'm sort of, I've become sort of establishment. Oh, and, no. And sometimes I'm sort of treated like, you know, the, the queen, you know. Well, you are the queen of Ireland. Opening science fairs and that sort of stuff. <laughs> and that's odd for me because can you still be this underground transgressive performer? and be on the cover of Hello Magazine. Like, it's a weird thing, <laughs> you know? So, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure, I'm not sure, sure. either, so I have to sort of work that but out. I think that's quite good that you're now, you, you are royalty. You really are. I mean, it must be. Well, it's funny, people, at, you know, in Ireland especially, they take everything I say so seriously now. Right, oh gosh. And that's a bit of a weird thing, and when, you know, when your job is actually not to take things seriously. No, exactly. So does that mean, do you have to kind of almost censor yourself? I can't imagine that you do. Well, no, I have, <laughs> but I've had to make a very conscious decision not to censor myself. Right. Or certainly in my live shows. But mm. like, you know, yeah, if, if it's a, to a reporter or something, you have to play the politician sometimes. That's just life. Mm. Um, but in my live shows, I've made a very conscious decision. No, if I felt comfortable saying it 15 yeah. years ago, I'll still say it No, today. absolutely. No, your shows are hilarious. I mean, oh. really, no, they are. They're absolutely hilarious. They're really, really funny. I mean, you've got a brilliant sense of humour, and it's really sharp. And what I like about it is uh, you, you, you Are just... Are you hitting on me? Yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> absolutely. I, I thought I was sort of being subtle, but clearly I wasn't. I was trying. No, it wasn't wasn't We're going to elope to the Highlands together. <laughs> well, we can. Yeah, yeah. We could get married, you see. That's the thing. Yeah, of course, it can yes. happen. Everywhere except Northern Ireland. Yes. To bring the politics back in for a second. I know. We're all Northern Ireland. What's the going on there? part of you know, the UK and Ireland that you can't get married in. So that's that's a weird one. I would think surely that's got to change. That's got to but that's got to really come from the people. I cannot I guess. imagine that it's going to last much longer. And all the polls suggest that you know the vast majority of people in Northern Ireland are absolutely fine with it. Yeah. But it, there are particular sure. political parties that keep throwing up the roadblocks. But they, not forever. Not forever. No, it's an unstoppable force. I mean, a, we have come a long way. You know, as as a nation, we have yeah. come a long way. There is still a lot to do. Well, what, it's interesting because we've reached a point in, you know, in Britain and Ireland where, you know, under the law, 
LGBT people are treated entirely equally, and that's mm -hmm. a wonderful place to be. Sure. But it's a, it, you know, the law is different from, you know, the reality. Uh, I the guess. reality. Yes, and walking down the street at Indeed. 2 a.m. in wherever, you yeah. know. Yeah. And indeed. so I think that takes a little longer. Mm. But even in that, you know, we've made such incredible strides in it's 35, amazing. 40 years, whatever. It's been an amazing journey, and we're just about old enough to have seen it happen. We are <laughs> just about. <laughs>